Hey guys, come for MC here again. Today we are going to be talking about addition. Woo, addition! I know you guys are excited. Okay, so first, to understand how addition works, we have to understand how subtraction works in Little Big Planet 2. It seems counterintuitive, but that is the way that we have to go. So first, I'm going to use some batteries. These are going to provide signals, because when I talk about addition and subtraction, I'm talking about signals and specifically percentages so you'll see it when we open up a battery we can change our signal strength so I did 90 and 70 so I'm going to set up subtraction and to do that we use the direction combiner notice that it takes two inputs on the left and it has one output on the right what we do is we wire our number that we start with in the positive and the thing we want to subtract from it in the negative. So now we have 90 minus 70 and so this should be outputting 20. But how do we know? Well, some members of the community have been very kind to us and have made what are called logic probes. So I have one here created by Fort, that's P-H-O-R-T, and it has a nice little set up here where you just give it the signal st the signal input in the in there and it will spit out what that number is so I've got it paused here so I'm gonna have to unpause and I'll go to preview so you can see it and you'll see 20 20 percent just like we suggested and remember 0.2 is 20 percent but if you don't want to have to pull one of these out every time or you would like to see how it works on your own we can use our good friend the sequencer which we talked about last time and we are going to use this ever useful positional setting but to do that I want to first set it up so that we have 10 stripes so each, stri each stripe will represent 10 percent so we take our wire we put it in our sequencer input there and then we change it to positional remember positional its position will match the strength of the signal coming in so right now it's at that second dash that second stripe which means that we're at 20 percent and if I change that to 60 so now I have 90 minus 60 it's going to be at 30 percent just as expected so this is a visual way of seeing what you have now if I change this to 95 for example and I have 95 minus 60 which is 35 so it's halfway between the third the vertical line and the fourth vertical line okay so with that, we're going to talk about addition, which really we have to take a step back and see how this works. So we'll step aside and come back to this later. Okay, so believe it or not, addition can be achieved via only subtraction. If you look here at the top line, we have 100 minus the quantity, 100 minus A minus B. And whatever that is will be equal to C. Okay, well, when we subtract this entire quantity, 100 minus A minus B, that's the same thing as taking the opposite of everything within. So the second line, we have 100 minus 100 plus A plus B, which is still equal to C. Well, the 100 minus the 100, that cancels out. We get zero. So we're left with only A plus B equals C. Thus, if we want just A plus B, we can get there using subtraction by doing 100 minus the quantity of 100 minus A minus B. Or in other words, we subtract A and B from 100, and whatever we get there, we take that away from 100. Simple. Okay, so now that we have a basic idea of how addition is going to work by using subtraction, let's put it into practice. So we drop our 100% battery on here by default set 100 and then we're going to set up our subtractions we're going to need three of them in all so there's one two and three okay now we're going to figure out what we're going to add together and we're going to use two other batteries for that so there's our first battery and we'll set this one down to 40 we'll set this one to 10 so we're going to add together 40 and 10 to get 50 Okay, so let's first take 100 minus 40. So we're down to 60. And then we'll take 60 
minus 10, and we're down to 50, minus 10. And then we'll take that 50 that we got and subtract it from 100. So we'll have 100 minus 50. It may seem silly because we were already at 50, but we have to do the 100 minus 50 to make this work. Okay, so we have 100 minus 40 minus 10, and then that gives us 50, and then we subtract it from 100 to get our signal of 50 out in the end. Now let's just make sure we've set this up correctly. So we pull out our sequencer, make sure we have 10 stripes here. And there we go, 10, and make sure our wire is set up there, and we're at position. Bang on at 50, just like we wanted. I can change any of these signals and it will change the sum. So now we have 50 plus 10 for 60, or 50 plus 20 for 70. So let's see, one, two, seven. So there's seven stripes. And we see that we can even include single percentages there. So we have 50 plus 25, which is right there between seven and eight at 75%. Okay. So that's addition in a nutshell. But let's say we wanted to have a little bit more control over which signals are being added together. So right now, these signals are just constantly being added. It's just always 50 plus 25 for 75. Well, let's make it so we can switch our signals on and off. You can't run a wire right to a battery, so what we have to do is use our circuit boards. So here I've shrunk this one down, and I've put the battery nice and neat on a circuit board there, and that should have a signal of 50. Now I'm going to make this one 30, so we're going to have 50 plus 30, which we anticipate to be 80. Let's get rid of our old battery there. Get out of the way. Okay, so now we got rid of our old one, so we have 50 plus 30, which is still equal to 80, as we would expect. But now how to actually switch our circuit boards off? Well, we can just run a wire to them to turn them on. Otherwise, they'll always be off. So let's go ahead and use, oops, let's use a counter instead of a timer. Set it to one so I can quickly turn them on and off. And make two of them, one for each circuit board. So that's for the first one. And that's for the second one. Notice that they're both off, and so we have no signal being added together, and so our signal strength is zero. Let's turn the second one on, which was 30, and so we're up to 30% for our sum. Turn the second one on, and now we have our 50 and our 30 adding together to make 80. Okay, so we can turn signals on and off using circuit boards, but let's say we wanted to add three signals together. We can definitely do that. We just have to extend our addition chain here. So we're still going to subtract 100 at the end. So we'll leave that there. But then we're also going to want one more subtraction for our third addition. So we set this up just like before. We continue the pattern. 100 minus our final answer of subtraction. And it should work. So we're going to use a third signal here. We'll set this one down to 10, so we're going to have 50 plus 30 plus 10, and it's right there at the ninth stripe for 90%, just like we expect. Okay, so we do subtraction three times, and then we take the answer and subtract it from 100. It's not much more to it than that. Hope this is making sense. I mean, there's some nice uses here adding together three signals or more signals, you just extend it, and you can always check your signal sum using a sequencer. So where we're going to go next time is how we can actually use these signal addition and subtraction in ways that are actually useful. Because right now we're just talking about theory, but we're actually going to put it into practice.